been sent some questions by people saying that the board during this social distancing period. Don't know how long it's going to go on for, but we may as well make the most of it. And there are things that you can do photography wise whilst you're at home. Now, a few years back, we did a video on macro photography on a budget, and we're going to use exactly the same setup, which is a Canon 600D. We've got extension tubes and the flash diffuser. Need a flash. And the speed light. This is a YN 565EX. It's a made in China one. Um, when you read reviews on them, they're not that great, but probably going to be taking pictures of bugs, so who cares. This is a diffuser for the light. It's basically just some kitchen roll inside a Chinese takeaway box with some cardboard sellotape to it. Last time, some of you asked for like a tutorial on how to make that. It's just some cardboard taped to a takeaway box with some kitchen file, not kitchen file, uh, kitchen paper in there. I don't think that justifies a tutorial, but let me know. Um, we could try and make a better version. It's also got a hairband on it, actually. Um, just to hold it to the flash a bit better. Pretty fancy. Then the extension tubes. These are kind of just spaces that go in between the lens and the camera body. There's no glass in there, so you don't have to go too fancy with these. I wouldn't get the cheapest models. I've heard some horror stories where um, the mount gets stuck to the camera body. So mid of the line will be fine. This one has three different sizes on it. They just attach the same way that a lens attaches. So you got the back mount with the electronic things for the camera, the spacer, then the lens goes on there. So you can put any lens on there. We're gonna use the 18 to 55 that came with the camera, but you could use whatever you want. The camera body that we're gonna use is Canon 600D and the 18 to 55. This is the first DSLR that I got, and I imagine they're really cheap now. It was one of the cheapest DSLRs you could get when I got mine, so I imagine they're really cheap now. Um, photography ideas. I'm fortunate. We've got a garden out there, so we could go and photograph flowers or bugs. We did that last time, though, and... Last night, um, we cracked open a coconut. It's gonna sound pretty random, but I was staring at it and I thought it might make a good photography subject. So this is the coconut. Um, we just whacked it with a hammer, opened it up. And then when you look closely, it's got all the um, sort of, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what they're called, fibers. Now, if you put on your pretentious hat, it kind of looks like um, rivers meandering through some mud or something. So I think that's the idea I'm going to go with. And I'm going to give you some different approaches for it. Because I know that some of you are going to complain that they don't want to buy a flash because it's too expensive or something like that. And you don't have to use a, a flash. If it's bright outside, you don't have to use a flash, no problem. Just um, go out at the brightest point of the day, I guess. Because the closer you get to this, the more light that you're gonna block out. So if you wanna get a more depth of field, you're gonna need as much light as possible. Another option is if you've got a tripod, you can just set this up somewhere and it's not gonna move like a bug would. So you can just set this up and then put a shutter speed that gets the right exposure and it doesn't really matter. Now, there are other ways that you can play with the light if you are gonna go in that direction. I like to use these bits of card, black on one side, white on the other. You can get them pretty cheap from uh, sort of stationary shops. They come in massive sheets and you can cut them down to whatever size you want in. So I've got a few big ones like this, got small ones, just depends on what I'm photographing. But you can use the white side to sort of fill in any shadow details. So that side of my face is slightly darker. You can sort of just bounce it in. 
kind of subtle, but if you like look under my chin, it's bringing some light back in. Or you can do the opposite and you can take light away. So you can make subtle changes that make quite a big difference. Um, really useful for something that's really cheap. One last thing before we jump into taking the pictures. Um, some of you might be thinking about a dedicated macro lens. This is a 100mm f2.8. Um, I use this a lot for product photography. If you're going from a subject which is small to quite big, or maybe you just want to get some even closer up details, this is really good. It's quicker. Um, with the extension tubes, you're going to find that you've got a working area which is quite small, and then you're going to have to change extension tubes to get a different frame. It's a bit complicated to get your head around, but if you've used them, you'll understand that. So I actually prefer to use the cheaper setup for the, the bug photography. I find it more fun. It's what I got started with. And I like my DIY setup. It's just what I like. Um, this is good. It's quicker, it's easier, more reliable, better quality, more expensive but I like going back to the basics. I've gone ahead and got this all set up now. We've got on the largest extension tube, which is 31 mil. We're about 25 mil on the lens and we're in manual focus. And you have to get really close up, but I've just um, kind of bodged it all together and it's stable on there. Got on tripod, so it's stable here. And then we're gonna use um, manual settings on the camera. Now you can see there that the left hand side is really bright and the right hand side is dark. Now if we bring in this bit of paper, you can see that it brings in some subtle details there. Now it might not look like much, but the more that you play around with it, the more interesting you can make it. You could also come onto this side and then take away some of that. For the settings on this one, we're about half a second at f8 and ISO 100. Using a two second timer, just so we can press it. And then by the time it's all balanced out, um, we get a sharp image. Now, the good thing about using a tripod is we can put this ISO as low as possible to get a better quality image. We could make the aperture even smaller and get even more in focus. And then we can put the shutter speed as long as we want it and nothing's gonna move. I find it useful to use the live view. So you can see it's a bit dark there, but there it's okay. This side's about right, this side's dark. And then we'll use this to balance it out. So we'll do one there as well. And then it all balances out pretty evenly. Like it's still a bit brighter on this side, but I kind of like that. But I hope that gives you some ideas. I'm gonna have a play around with that and see what I can come up with. Maybe try going around to one side where it's all bright or onto the darker side where the lighting's a bit more even without the card and then we can put the light in where we want it. But if you get any pictures, hashtag Adam Kaffer on social media and I'll check those out. And one thing, I always get the comments about this when I post videos about this kind of thing, is about magnification and people wanting numbers. I don't care about that kind of thing, so you waste wasting your time asking that. I have no idea. I, all I care about is getting a picture and having a bit of fun with it. And yeah, you're wasting your time going there. But I hope you found that helpful and hope you're staying safe. Fingers crossed this is all over soon. See you in the next one.